Where do our thoughts come from? Why do we make the mental connections we do? Does the self and mind really exist? Is philosophy ultimately a psychological enterprise? David Hume sought to answer these questions and more. David Hume, now on the philosophical roots of psychology. Like John Locke, Hume is an important figure in the British empiricist tradition. Empiricism proposes that knowledge is predominantly the result of experience. In fact, knowledge can only exist after sensory experience has occurred. Also, the empiricists were generally opposed to the belief that people have innate ideas or knowledge. David Hume was born in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1711. It was at this time that the piston-driven steam engine was first invented. About 20 years earlier, the Salem Witch Trials began. Hume studied at the University of Edinburgh, but never received a degree. Hume was very skeptical of religious beliefs. He felt that religious beliefs were irrational. Unlike many thinkers of the day, Hume was never a university professor. This was because the Scottish clergy blocked his appointments. Due to a nice inheritance, he was able to move to France. It was in France that Hume published his most important works. Hume's philosophy did a lot to further the social sciences and especially psychology. He felt that understanding human nature was an extremely important goal for science. He felt that science should be based on observation and should be experimental. By experimental, Hume meant that the focus should be on how cognitive experiences are related to each other and how experiences are related to behavior. Hume believed that cognitive experience is the main determinant of behavior. What are some of the important components of Hume's cognitive psychology? Perceptions and thoughts were central to Hume's approach. Perceptions can be activated by either internal or external stimuli. Hume called very forceful perceptions, impressions. Perceptions that were relatively weak were called ideas. It was through people's imagination that ideas can be arranged in multiple ways. Hume believed that ideas do not always correspond with reality. An example for Hume was the erroneous belief in God. The idea of association is also important for Hume's cognitive approach. The importance of association goes all the way back to Aristotle. Hume believed that some associations were more common than others. This was because association developed as a result of three general laws. First, ideas that are similar are often associated with each other. For example, self-esteem and self-confidence have a close connection. Second, Ideas about objects or experiences that tend to occur at the same time or place are often associated. For example, when you think of a hamburger, McDonald's may come to mind. Finally, an outcome and the event that precedes it are often associated. This is often thought of as cause and effect. For Hume, the danger of causal thinking was that just because some events precede an outcome, that does not necessarily mean that the preceding event was a causal factor. For example, having a soft drink before the onset of a headache does not necessarily mean that the soft drink caused the headache. Hume's cognitive psychology had some very startling consequences, especially for the Western mind. Hume claimed that there was neither an objective self, objective laws of nature, or mind. According to Hume, these are all products of imagination. What we call the mind is nothing more than a collection of different perceptions, which are connected by certain relationships. Also, there is no self independent of perception. These ideas have a close affinity to some Buddhist views. Hume had a very cognitive perspective on human nature. However, this was balanced by the role of emotions in human behavior and thought. Hume believed that emotions and ideas are all connected. This is another example of Hume's associationism. We react emotionally not only to experiences, but also ideas. 
According to Hume, the pattern of emotional reactions determines one's character or personality. It is character that determines behavior. How is Hume relevant to psychology? Some have suggested that Hume brought efforts to understanding the mind to the forefront of Western philosophy. For Hume, philosophy, religion, and science all essentially rely on mental processes. Hume provides us with an early model of how the mind works. He proposed that there were relationships between thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Modern empirical psychology has contributed to Hume's lead by developing theories of behavior, emotion, memory, decision-making, and cognitive structures. Finally, Hume proposes a rudimentary framework for understanding personality.